How's it going, buddies? Today we are going to talk about the keys command pattern. Now, what is the keys command pattern? This is a combination of two things. First, let's actually start with the second one. The second one is the command pattern. This pattern is going to help you achieve a synchronous behavior that is coherent with a sequence. It will make sense later on, don't worry. And the first part is keys, which is keep it simple, stupid, or rather keep it simple, stupid. Don't take it the wrong way. Now, how do we combine these two things together and why do we need to combine it? Let's start first with the definition of the command pattern. What is the command pattern? Well, the command pattern is just one other pattern, right? You probably have dealt with already hundreds, or, okay, let's not exaggerate, but dozens of patterns in software engineering, right? And what they want to do with these patterns is to make your life easier. That's correct. Now, these patterns are usually classified in three categories, which is creational, behavioral, and structural patterns for the reason that we have way too many. But we are going to focus today on the command pattern itself, which is just one of the patterns that we have at our disposal to make great games happen. So what is the command pattern? The command pattern is nothing else than a set of tools that you can use in order to execute behavior that is asynchronous in nature, and yet allows for a sequential way of working with these tasks, right? To accomplish a goal. Okay, this is way too abstract. I'm getting tired of this. Let's just code something, right? So let's assume that I have a player script somewhere around. Let's call it my player. And what I'm going to do here is to say, hey, I want to level up because I am good, right? Because I killed an NPC or wherever. So normally what we would do in this situation would be something like, you know, um, let's take the player profile and then we increase the level, right? And then if we have a backend, what we need to do is to synchronize with the backend. And we might also want to show some confetti. So we would like to do something like maybe instantiate some confetti prefab. And after that, we might want to show some UI saying, congratulations, you just achieved level 1003. Okay. And for that, we could use additive scenes, or, you know, if we want to go to the simple way, we could also go for an instantiation of a certain prefab, for example, some UI uh, prefab or some level up UI prefab. And then we configure all of these things and we pack this all together in a function called, for example, on level up or level up. You get the idea, right? I hope that makes sense. This is how traditionally you would do something like this in your game, right? However, we have several problems with this and this is why uh, we need to come up with something like the command pattern. One of the problems is, well, you don't do this actually instantaneously, right? Sometimes you just need to wait for some actions to finish before you start the next sequences, right? For example, the first line looks quite synchronous to me. This is probably an atomic operation. We might be fine here, but what about the backend synchronization? We want to do this asynchronously or synchronously. That depends on your gameplay logic, okay? Usually this is asynchronous because we don't want to block the main thread or anything, but you know, it is totally up to you. However, once we want to show the, the level up confetti, then that's also another matter. Do we want to wait for the confetti to finish before showing the UI? Normally, yes, but you know, it depends as well on your game. No matter what, we want control over the lifetime of these processes, right? We want to know, for example, once we have spawned this level up UI, did the user press on continue? Right, because maybe after the continue, we want to show some other animations, or we want to tell the user, "Hey, do you want to buy some coin for, you know, fifty percent of whatever it is?" The main thing is this: we sometimes need to have control over the sequence of steps that might be asynchronous, and here's where the command pattern excels. Now, the command pattern can be implemented in many ways, and if you look 
all around internet you will find probably something that is way too complex, okay? Something that is not simple because they want to be generic, right? If you offer something to the internet, I guess that's, you know, you try to be generic, right? So everyone can use it. However, when you go into your game, you will notice that you don't need such an of an engineered solution. You want something that just works in your game. And, you know, we can call this, you ain't gonna need it, my friend. That is why I'm not such a big fan of most of the solutions that I found on the internet. But do not worry, I'm going to show you what I would offer you as a solution. Right? I'm going to show you something simple, which is the first part of the question, the keys part. Now let's go into Unity and let me show you how I would actually create a simple system, right? A simple keys command pattern. I'm just going to create a new C Sharp script and it's going to be uh, an interface called I command. Now in this I command, guess what we are going to do? Well, first this is an interface, of course, and this is going to be the interface that every command is going to implement. So as we saw, these kind of commands or tasks that we want to accomplish might need to be asynchronous, right? For this reason, I normally go with curtains, although you can, of course, go other way if you prefer to go with other ways of doing this, for example, there is in keywords and such. But this is the basic uh, way of operating, right? Just create an I command and then create a method that is called run. And it returns you an E enumerator because it's going to be, uh, you know, like asynchronous, right? Then later on, we can decide whether we want to wait or not. Right, depends on your level of patience. So now, what do we do with this interface? Of course, we want to implement this. What I'm going to do is to create a level up command, which is going to encompass all the stuff that we wanted to achieve before, right? So the level up command is going to implement the, whoop, the I command interface. And of course, we need to implement a few methods, right? Let's call this my level up command because Unity is getting annoyed. So now we go to my level up command and now here we just need to implement the missing members. And here's where we can just copy and paste everything we had here so far. Good. This is the first step. Now, if we want to do something asynchronous, then we need to do something, for example, like a yield return backend sync, right? If the sync function returns again an enumerable uh, variable, right? If we don't want to wait on something asynchronous, we'll just call it as it should, right? Now, for example, if we wanted to spawn the confetti prefab, we could probably create one command just for that and then call something like, hey, yield return new spawn confetti. And then we could just, you know, uh, wait on this run, right? So we could do something like this, spawn confetti command. Now, what does this command do? It can do whatever you want, but let's just implement something simple, simple so we get the whole idea of this thing, right? So again, this could be a command then we would need to do instantiate, uh, uh, let's call this confetti prefab. Then, you know, uh, we could just wait, let's say we could wait for 10 seconds. Or ideally, if you are doing some production code, maybe you want to do something more like return new, wait until, I don't know, uh, your Par particle system is dead or is finished. This is totally up to you, right? For now, for this example, I'm just going to wait 10 seconds. And after this 10 seconds, what I'm going to do is to destroy this confetti that I just spawned, right? And I could do something like that. Now, we have two more uh, challenges remaining. First, instantiate and destroy do not exist in this context, and this is because this is an interface and this is not a Unity object. We can do many things. For now, I'm just going to use the camera main because it's the easiest fa path for me, right? Don't do this in production, by the way. 
Now we have two challenges ahead of us. First, the instantiate and destroy do not exist because this is not a Unity object. We can do many things. Just for the completion to go through, I'm just going to do this on the camera class, okay? But you know, you just do this in a specific game object that you have for these reasons. For example, a crouting runner or something like this. And second, we don't have a reference to our confetti prefab. This can be easily solved by having a global uh, game object pool in your scene or something that has everything set to static. Or we can also pass the reference in a constructor or some member of this command. There are many ways of dealing with this. For now, I'm just going to create a game object instead and leave it like this because I just want you to show the complete example. So this is how it could look like if I wanted for the confetti to finish before you know showing up the level up UI prefab, right? And here, you know, again, I would probably do something like um, show level UI command or level, uh, actually let's call this show level pop-up command run, right? Of course, we would need to create this but you get the point, right? If I didn't want for, for example, for the confetti to finish and I wanted to show this together with the UI, maybe I could just do something like this, right? I could just do something like stack routine and then just pass this entire thing, right? This way I just don't have to be waiting for this to finish. We're not yielding on that. We are just, you know, just executing this in parallel. So as you can see, this gives us a lot of flexibility and this is keys. This is simple. Now, how do we go about using this? It is pretty simple. I just need to go to my player and whenever we level up, again, uh, we can just start a routine and then create a new level up command and run it. That's it, okay? If we wanted to wait for this command to finish, we can, because we would just need to yield on this, okay? If, for example, if this was a enumerator, we could just say something like yield, return, all of this thing. All right. So as you can see, there are many ways of accomplishing this, but this is the key part, okay? I don't want to go into the details on how to create this pop-up or how to spawn the confetti and how to pass the references. No, that's not important. The key thing is that by using commands, you can put steps in sequences, right? And these steps might be, you know, asynchronous, like for example, these ones, and they might also be synchronous like this ones, right? We might want to wait or we might not want to wait. This is totally up to you and this is the cool thing about the commands. Now, it is simple to use the commands because like I said, this is the keys command button. You just need to do something like this. You don't need to go more complicated than this. And I hate when things escalate, right? When things explode in complexity, because guess what? Here, things might be okay, but in one year, things might have exploded in complexity. And I might have been spending weeks in fixing them. And then, you know, it is not only one command, but it might be 40 commands and it's not fun to maintain commands that are overly engineered. Not only that, you are going to create commands and guess what? It sucks and it is frustrating to need to deal with a complex system, especially when you know deep in your heart that it's more complex than your game needs. So my recommendation is for sure to start simple and you know to keep expanding as you need, but no more than that. Do not do the other way around because it is annoying to deal with complexity when you really don't need to pay for that. I hope that makes sense. Now, there is a few more uh, details that I want you to consider, right? One of the details that you need to be aware of is that this spawning of commands creates garbage in memory. That means that you are putting pressure in your garbage collector, which means that at some point your game is going to be, you know, either slowing down or it's going to freeze for seconds. And I guess that your users will not like that, right? In short, there are many things that you need to consider before using commands in production code. And if you want to know much more about commands and other patterns like the command factory or dependency injection,
there are many of these other neat tools and toys that we can play with that I didn't mention in this video. If you want to know more about all of this, just check the week number 17th of the Unity Performance Task Force. Not only that, you also have other lessons on very neat patterns, for example, the transaction pattern, the dependency injection system, and also the command factory pattern. You also gain access to all of these toys when you subscribe to the trial of the Unity Performance Task Force. So if you want to learn these things in detail, just head on to the Unity Performance Task Force. The link is below. And let's have some fun and let's level up as professional developers. All right, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of the command pattern. Let me know how you use it in your own game. Good luck and see you soon, my friend.